Okay, here's another question. This type of question is uh, one that appeared on a CST exam, uh, one of the California state exams. And it says, based only on sex chromosomes in typical human egg and sperm cells at fertilization, the probability of producing a female is... So based on this, we know this is the body cell of the mom, body cell of the dad. And so we know these are the parents. You might be wondering, well, how? How do you know that? Well, look at it. It's diploid. Okay, so remember diploid is body cells. So I know it's not a sperm or egg. Sperm or egg are not body cells, okay? They're made in your body, but they leave your body, right? So they're not really attached to your body. So body cells are diploid. So I know this is from the, the parents, okay? So that's a hint. There's two of each chromosome, right? Two. All right. Diploid. So now, the next step, we always talk about that we have to write the sex cells. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the sex cell combinations. Law of segregation, you guessed it. Remember meiosis. This is easy. And then um, do the same thing, sperm, right? Okay, so just simple. Separate them. Go ahead. X, X. Separate them. X, Y. Okay, this is kind of like the make a baby thing we did at the first step and the first gene we figured out with the make a baby lab. All right, so now we fertilize, okay, fertilize. Remember these three rules, one, two, three, easy. All right, so now we put them in the Punnett square. Okay, so I put the sperm out here, eggs over here, and then the zygotes right here. Put a little halo so you can tell the difference. All right, cool, so now uh, bring these down, X, Y, that's the guy, remember sperm go there, eggs go over here. X, X, and fill them out, down and across, X, X, down and across. Uh, don't put the Y in front, put the X, out of respect, because this one's bigger. Remember, the X is very powerful, has a lot of traits, and then we fill it out like that. So, let's take a look here. Um, you can go ahead and do the genotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratio. Genotypic ratio just means the numbers and all that, They're the letters, sorry. So, I look at the X combination. How many times do I see that? When well, I see it twice. 2xx x, dot dot versus 2xy. Then I look at the phenotypic uh, ratio and I see that there's two females to two males. Then I can go further and say, well, there were two out of four, right? Out of four possibilities, there were two out of four, which I could reduce to one half uh, females. And then obviously to same thing, two out of four, which reduces to one half males. You can go on percentages, 50% females, 50% males. So the probability, what does that mean? The chances, that's what it means. The chances, and usually you do it by percent or fraction. Fraction, okay? So whenever they ask for probability, they're looking for the chances that, that you can have some kind of offspring or some characteristic. And they want to know what's the probability of producing female. Well, we just fill, figured that out. It's 50%. Okay, easy problem right there. And that one's in your packet somewhere. Okay, students, here's our next problem. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Susie. All right, cool. Uh, round pants. Oh, I guess square pants versus round pants. Pretty interesting, huh? SpongeBob is heterozygous for his square shape, but Sponge Susie is round. Create a, pu a Punnett square to show the possibilities that would result if they had a, a children. All right, cool. Now uh, let's see square uh, SpongeBob. They say that um, he is. Well, we have to put the the parents first. Remember that. So I'm going to write parent Spongebob and then square Susie. All right. So what are their um, their genotypes? Well, let's first put the alleles. Now, which one is a dominant one? Well, let's see. Um, it's telling us that he is heterozygous for square. So that must be the dominant form because if he's heterozygous for square and he's squared, it must be whatever that shape, it must be dominant. So I'm going to put big S and little s 
s must mean big s must mean square little s must be round so he's heterozygous square right so big s little s and she is round and that's all they gave us so that's pretty easy to figure out because the only way to get round must be two recessives so square heterozygous square and uh, round okay cool now we know the parents and then we go and get after remember when we do the parents two what do we get that's right, you're paying attention, sex cells. And so we do the loss segregation, big S, little s, and Spongebob, he's a, he's a guy, right? So he makes sperm, okay? And then um, over here we get little s, little s, so these are eggs. And then we go ahead and put them in our Punnett square. Put the sperm out here, uh, big S, little s, I'm just moving them there. And then little s, little s. Now here's a here's a good tip whenever you do your Punnett squares. Make sure you exaggerate the sizes. And I didn't do a good job here. These are all little s's, but the big s should be really big. So I'm going to go back and make a big s. All right, cool. So big s, little s. Remember down and across. And this is little s, so little s, little s. Um, down and across, big s, little s. Down and across, little s, little s. All right, so now let's go ahead and figure out um, the possible genotypes for their kids. Well, let's look at the possible genotypes. Big S, little s, or little s, little s. Those are the two possibilities. What are the chances of a child with, with a square shape? Now, before I continue, it's just always good to do phenotypic and genotypic and phenotypic ratios. This is really easy to do. Again, genotypic ratio means how many different combinations we have. Um, big S, little s, how many times do we have that? Once, twice, that's it. Just cross those out because you're using them. Um, dot, dot, remember that. And then little s, little s, how many times? Twice. Right? Okay. Now, phenotypic ratio, in other words, how many come out square? And how many come out round? Well, two out of four, right? So two square and to round out of four possibilities here so we can then do our fractions two out of four which you know is going to be one half right so one half square to one half round that's fifty percent and fifty percent so we go back up here and it says um, it's really two out of four fifty percent and how many around? Two out of four or fifty percent. And that's how we do that problem. Real easy.